Howdy, everybody. Um, thanks for having me. My name is Neil Stubbings. I'm an animation artist or motion designer or a director, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I work out of Zurich, Switzerland. And I started out as a classic graphic designer. Uh, but I had the opportunity to get into animation uh, the, while doing an internship at a local TV station. Uh, a local TV station in Switzerland, that is. Uh, that was many, many moons ago. Um, I, uh, I started using After Effects uh, during that uh, internship and I was, uh, I'm doing animation ever since. Um, so today I'm mostly doing commercial work. Um, I have a wide range of expertise uh, as I've been doing this a really long time. Uh, at the beginning, I usually I, what I did is I did everything in After Effects uh, up until the point where I built entire sets or rooms with uh, 2D layers inside of After Effects. Uh, I tried to avoid learning a 3D program because I was a graphic designer and I didn't have the nerves uh, to learn something very technical like a 3D application. But uh, after doing this, um, and it's very tedious work to uh, like arrange all of these two and a half D layers, um, I couldn't find a way around like, uh, to learn a 3D application. And I learned Cinema 4D because it's very artist friendly and it works well together with After Effects. Um, this is a project I've done a few years ago. Uh, it's a commercial for uh, Nestle France. Uh, it advertises an ice cream cone, of course, as you can see. Uh, it's uh, very stylized, very graphic novelish. Uh, uses lots of uh, Photoshop and Illustrator elements. Um, and I think the style still holds up because uh, it's kind of timeless. It's not bound to any 3D render technology, so it ages a lot less than something that's rendered perfectly in 3D today and tomorrow looks shitty. Um, so besides my uh, commercial work, I try to find time to do a lot of uh, personal work, like uh, my own island uh, or uh, spooky castle. Um, also, it doesn't always have to be uh, cartoony. Uh, sometimes I always try to get out of my comfort zone, and this is way out of my comfort zone, and try to do something uh, photorealistic. And uh, I recently bought uh, Octane Render for Cinema 4D and was just trying how far I could get with my knowledge to make something that uh, uh, looks realistic and uh, makes you hungry. Um, so if you don't believe it's 3D, it is. Um, what brings me to uh, my passion, uh, funny characters. Uh, and somehow I think uh, aliens and uh, fast food are a great combination. So my topic today, classic cartoons with the 3D twist. Uh, I don't know about you, but I grew up uh, with all these great classic cartoons uh, Roger Rabbit, Daffy Duck, um, Elmer Fudge, all the great stuff by Chuck Jones, short and funny stories, great characters, and of course, uh, lovely backgrounds, really great stuff there. Um, one of my favorites, that's from Roadrunner, it's super reduced, fantastic. Very graphic. Love it. Uh, this is eerily up to date in its context. <coughs> so um, I really like the look of these cartoons uh, because it's so completely different than the big studios that are doing today. I mean, Pixar and DreamWorks and everybody is doing great work, 
but it's it's kind of sad that this this style gets lost a little because of the technology. Um, look at this is fantastic, very graphic. Yeah, so um, being a graphic designer, I was trying to find ways in to incorporate like this a very graphic reduced style in combination with uh, 3D. Um, and so uh, a few years back, six years back, um, I have done this uh, short film called Stopover. Uh, I think the look as well still holds up. It's not, it's timeless. Uh, the animation is a bit jaggy. I would do it quite a bit differently today, but it's really nice. Have a look. So what defines that look? If you go back uh, and look at one of those classic cartoon backgrounds, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of texture in there. And I'm not speaking about like 3D texture in a 3D kind of sense, um, like stone or wood or uh, material. It's texture from painting. Um, you see the painting texture. So if you look this, at this uh, frame, you can all, almost make out the brush strokes and the paper texture. Um, also notice the ground, it has, it's so simple and has great variation, great depth as well. Um, and look at this, uh, this is also, I love this frame. Look at this stone, it's just a stone but it has so much texture. So I came to the conclusion that uh, it's all about gradients. Um, a big difference between what a computer does and what a human can do without a computer, of course, is uh, a computer can be super perfect. So you have 
really perfect, smooth gradients. You have straight lines. Uh, whereas in, uh, if you would paint this by hand, it b would be really, really difficult to get the, all those gradients perfect. Even if you use something like a very 90s technique, an airbrush, you'd still get a little bit of variation within the gradients. So uh, the first thing, this is obviously CG. The first, th first thing I was trying is just to get rid of the gradients. So this looks a little bit better. Um, it has a look that uh, commonly is referred as a cell shader. Uh, it's, ki it's kind of fine. It works for some stuff. But here, you lose a lot of like, definition in the creases. You lose a lot of depth. So you don't really know like, where his neck is and where his belly fat is. What is this? Uh, it doesn't come out as well. So um, what I tried is I tried to uh, paint the textures in Photoshop. And I tried to uh, be really, really have a rough kind of, um, don't be too detailed in your texture painting. Um, of course, I painted this uh, with a vacuum in Photoshop and not with an actual brush. Um, but that was a, was a look that I kind of fell in love with, and I think it worked quite well. It worked uh, the way I uh, intended to do. Of course, there's still problems like that the lines, uh, the edges are way too perfect, but we can address this uh, later. So if you look at uh, this asteroid, uh, for instance, it's very simple geometry. It's just various uh, pieces just stuck into each other. Uh, and if you paint this um, in Photoshop very roughly, uh, it comes out like this. And it's, uh, it's a really great look. Um, on a side note, I'm not, I'm not trying to copy the classic cartoon look. Of course, I'm trying to find like a new way to, to fuse the 3D look um, with the, the classic uh, texture look. So, Equally important to uh, like texturing is also lighting, um, because if you have a too soft of a light, it cr creates gradients again, and as we learned, gradients are bad. So, if you look at this guy again, on his moped, again a very, very simple geometry uh, that adds a lot to the simplified graphic look. Um, these are the painted textures, textures for him. Uh, and this is uh, him without a light. And it already looks uh, kind of hand-painted. So if you add a light, it looks like this. Um, and this thing, again, very simple. Uh, with the painted textures, note that it's really roughly painted, so I, uh, uh, it was important that you have, that you can still make out the, uh, the single brush strokes. So because if you work too perfectly, it's going to end up looking like a perfect gradient again. So this is it with, uh, with a light. Note that uh, even the glass, it has no gradients at all, but it's just a highlight and it still reads as a glass. Of course, I had to go the other way recently and just trying, to how, trying out how it might look if it would be a real car. Pretty funny. I'd buy that car. So back uh, to painting. This is, uh, this is the background plate uh, painted entirely in, inside of Photoshop. Um, took a long time <laughs> to get it right, but uh, it's great. It has exactly the look I want. Um, and of course, especially with that style, um, of course, with every style of uh, 3D animation or shot footage, of course, you go through some stages of compositing. But um, with this style, uh, it's particularly important, uh, the step of compositing, because you can get really uh, 
a lot out of your renders if you, if you uh, run it through uh, After Effects. So this is a frame straight out of the renderer, and it looks kind of OK. Um, but if you put it through After Effects and use all the passes you have, like a depth pass, uh, it gets a really great amount of depth. Also, there's some slight uh, particle um, work involved that makes a bit of the uh, atmosphere. Um, it's hard, probably hard to see here, but if you watch the movie again, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of haze um, you move through, and that's all done in After Effects with the particles. So here again, straight out the render, after some compositing, and also I decided to uh, to change the color of uh, of his suit and his car in post. But I didn't want to want to render it out again, all of it, because it would be take ages. So um, I had all the passes, all the masks from the 3D. So I just could uh, change it with a simple hue and saturation effect inside of After Effects. Here again, I particularly like this shot where you see uh, what a great difference the compositing makes. So this is, uh, I'm currently working on the short film in my free time, of course, uh, for a few years now. <laughs> Actually, I wanted it to have it finished this year, but um, I was held up uh, by speeches at software booths. Um, so this is, uh, this is a work in progress. And Here's a quick sneak peek. It has no audio at all. Um, it's just the first few scenes. Um, it's it's all about it's a, it's about the penguin. It's about global warming, of course. He's hot. He he craves an ice cream. He finds a vending machine that sells ice cream at the South Pole, and uh, he tries to buy an ice cream. His favorite flavor is sold out, unfortunately, and the other thing apparently doesn't work. And then uh, it takes an unexpected turn. So uh, this was the initial sketch for the penguin done in Illustrator. I do a lot of sketching in, in Illustrator because I'm kind of used to it, because I, I was using Illustrator for years for my uh, regular graphic design work. So after this, I uh, went into uh, Cinema 4D and built it in 3D. And then uh, the look. I tried to get uh, a more uh, reduced, more graphic look than the stopover um, film. The stopover film was more, had, had a little bit more texture, so this would be the whole thing. This would be the penguin in the same style of the stopover movie. And they didn't want to go down the same road. So I was uh, looking for something more radically reduced. Uh, this was an option, more visible paint. But uh, it kind of looks like a, a diarrhea incident, or like he peed himself. So no. Um, this is another way. And it was too too apparent, too too obvious. So I settled with this. Um, pretty close to the um, stopover look, but a little bit more reduced. And if you again, if you put it through compositing, a lot of this stuff also gets uh, gets more uh, blown out. So this is him with a light. Also. Um, What's important here is that in 3D, that's one single light source. Um, it's only like a hard light from the left. And that rim light is all shader based. So no matter where you put your light, it all, you always have the rim, lay, rim, the rim light. And it's very important for that look, I think. It's also very important if you have it in front of a background. So it sets, 
him off from the background because you don't have any outlines like you would have in a classic hand-drawn cartoon. This is the operator of the vending machine. And the real hero actually here, at least for me, is the ice, uh, because it took a lot of tinkering and experimentation to, uh, to get it right. Here's some early tests. 3D, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> nothing more than an early test. Doesn't look right. This looks weird. Too many gradients, too 3D-ish. Uh, so I went back uh, and added uh, heaps of textures. It has a kind of an interesting look, but it doesn't look icy, doesn't look cold. Could also be like just blue concrete. So back again, tinkering. This looks better, um, but too much going on, too complex. Because no, this is this is all all backgrounds, so it doesn't doesn't need to be in your face. This is better. And finally, next step uh, is this. Uh, took me a long time to uh, achieve this style. But in the end, if you're 3D guys, you might be interested. It's, it's only, it's a color channel. It's some um, Fresnel in the luminance. And it's a slight bump. But again, compositing, of course, is a very important step. This kind of looks OK. It's fine, straight out of the render. But after a little bit of After Effects magic, it really comes out nicely as ice with the subsurface uh, style looking shading. So for the compositing, I um, have to really go through this quickly. The, I have like passes for everything. Uh, ambient occlusion, um, masks, and I go through like every, every single object has its own adjustment layer in After Effects so I can uh, adjust um, their look and their, uh, their color correction individually. Um, little haze, some overall color correction. And this is an important step, uh, I think, for at least for my style. I was, remember when I was saying like the computer does like this? It's, it's just too perfect, it's a straight line and it, it gives it away that it's rendered in a computer. So what I do is uh, I, do it, I run it through a series of, of effects in, in, uh, in After Effects, of course, um, to make it a little bit more hand-drawn. Um, so it breaks up the straight lines, it bleeds out a little. Um, it's very a subtle effect. Uh, you, you shouldn't overdo it for the motion part because it just it's too apparent if it if it moves. Uh, but if you look at the poster um, for the movie, it's a little bit more apparent. You see here, like um, the straight lines are broken up. It bleeds out a little bit, uh, and it gives us, it gives it generally a very uh, a handmade, not too perfect look. Again here, um, straight lines are broken up. Uh, this is an interesting shot. Um, the uh, effect of the water was all done in After Effects with, uh, with many layers of particles. So these are all the particles used. Uh, just exported the camera and the null object from Cinema 4D, um, the null object that emits these particles, of course. And after a series of effects and compositing um, and blurring and median stuff, you get these passes from all the particles. And if you layer them together, you get a really 2D looking cartoonish water effect. That's it. And the last uh, project I want to show you is uh, actually not a personal project. It's, it's a commissioned film, but it felt like a personal project because 
I had all the um, artistic freedom I wanted to take, so I could do what I want. It's for a Swiss uh, bag uh, manufacturer called Freitag. They produce uh, bags, pack packs, iPhone sleeves and whatnot out of used truck tarps. And here's the movie. Now this here yarn I'm about to spin concerns these two brothers at that little ranch way out there in the countryside. But this ain't no ordinary ranch. You won't find cows or chickens here. So there ain't no milking and you have to get your eggs elsewhere. Because them two brothers, they've been truckers their whole lives. Out there on the roads, rumbling along with the tumbling tumbleweeds all over this here continent. They lived their life on the road, but they always had a dream, a dream of something bigger. And it wasn't a beach chair lounging, if you know what I mean. Nope, too much diesel in the veins for that. So when it was time to take that final off-ramp into the sunset, they knew where they was headed, found themselves a ranch, and took to raising the next generation of trucks. That's right, they're raising trucks. Because after a lifetime of driving cargo, they knew all about what it takes to raise them little trucklets. Getting up at dawn to run them, feeding them right, tucking them in at night. They had the love and dedication needed to raise them upright. And it ain't no short haul, neither. You see, it's a jungle out there on the roads of European land, and if a trucker's wheels are still wobbly, he'll end up in the dusty ditch. So you've got to train them hard and really teach them how to haul. And then one day, that thunderous thumping in their big diesel hearts is just too much to hold back. You point the little guy toward the highway and let him roam free. Let him find his own way on the frontier. He takes on a job at a renowned shipping company, packing cargo, logisticating. He'll wrangle all the great roads, from the icy flatlands of the north, up and over the jagged Alps, and down to the hot and cobbled streets of the Southland. <laughs> kilometer after kilometer spent perpetuating this here economy, delivering the things we need to live life day to day. Until after years of hard work, it's time to exit the old Autobahn. The truck returns home to the place he was raised. Now, the boys, they welcome the trucks home with open arms. They unhitch those trailers one last time and pull those beautifully weathered tarps off for one last cleaning. While the truck puts up his proverbial feet, the boys get to work, scrubbing off all the grit and grime while preserving that pretty patina. The cleaned up tarps are taken to the old design barn where they're sliced up just right, so every bag will be unique and just as pretty as can be. Finally, it's on to the old sewing machine, which stitches up a yarn even more perplexing than this one. 
And there she is, a newborn babe with a history all her own. But that's about where our tale comes to an end. I sure hope you enjoyed our little journey meeting the brothers and their little trucklets. If it helps you enjoy and appreciate your fry cook bag even more, well then, my work here is done. But wait, I can hear you noodling. Where do them cute little trucklets come from? Well, my friend, that is a story for another time. So have fun and keep on trucking, partner. So yeah, um, did you notice the gradients? <laughs> Didn't you say gradients are bad? Not necessary, not all of the time, of course. Uh, I'm running out of time, so um, unfortunately I cannot break down this uh, short film for you. I had uh, an hour-long talk at the Maxon booth, breaking down the whole movie. So uh, you were able to, uh, if you're really interested, you, you can uh, catch it online at the Maxon site. Uh, or you can uh, hit me up in, uh, I'm around, I'm walking around the booth here. Um, so, any questions, hit me up on the floor and uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>